Hey everybody, it is Kellen Nitro for Nitro Maniac TV's Wrestling Unlimited coming at you with the Nitro's Take for All Out 2020, which aired on September 5th, 2020, coming at you from Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida. Of course, the hub home of AEW All Elite Wrestling since uh, the pandemic basically started. And uh, But it was very awesome and very cool to see that they were able to sell 15% uh, capacity tickets uh, for this pay-per-view tonight and for upcoming uh, AEW Dynamite shows and that stuff to get a little bit of a, a crowd pop and a crowd uh, feel to it uh, during this thing. So, uh, you know, very cool to see. What wasn't cool, apparently, was the weather down there. Uh, by the end of the show, it was about 85 to 90 degrees uh, down there in the United States Fahrenheit, I believe we do Celsius up here. So, uh, just doing a quick conversion, it's um, hot. Yeah, <laughs> by the end of the show there. And you're sitting in the, probably a concrete bowl, uh, sweating your you-know-what's off. But uh, you got yourself one of the more interesting shows of 2020. I'll give you that. Um, not interesting in that there were matches that were good, matches that were bad, like, you know, kind of wavered in quality. But interesting in just the goddamn weirdness that happened throughout the card tonight. So, I'm going to break it down match by match here and uh, kind of talk about some of my favorite spots in each match. We're going to start with the buy-in and then we'll get into the main card. And at the end of it all, I will give my out of 10 rating uh, for the show. And we'll take a look at what you guys voted on at Kellen Nitro for the uh, Twitter match of the night. Because I'm giving that responsibility to you guys anymore because I can't decide anymore. You guys are the better judges. So, we'll start with the buy-in. We'll start with a singles match. Serpenetico taking on Joey Janela and Dr. Luther is in Serpenetico's corner. Uh, this is a alliance that has started the past few weeks on Dark and has proven to be somewhat successful over the past few weeks. And Sunny Kiss and Joey Janela's corner and that's an alliance that started on Dynamite and has proven to be somewhat successful over the past few weeks as well. So the match starts hot. Janela is pissed that the beatdown Jericho gave him last week on AEW Dynamite. Yes, that's right. If you missed last week's Dynamite, uh, Chris Jericho um, in the lead up to the Mimosa Mayhem match with Orange Cassidy uh, basically beat up uh, Joey Janela in a singles contest. It was, it was it was a squash match. What can I say, right? Uh, Serpenetico is a head turner. This is my first real time watching him. Uh, of course, in Dark, uh, or on Dark, I should say, you watch them and it's either tag teams or it's squash matches or this and that. And uh, we saw with the, the, the uh, Matt Hardy Serpenetico return thing leading up to Stadium Stampede, uh, for Double or Nothing, where it was basically Sammy Guevara under the Serpenetical mask, and it wasn't the real Serpenetico, so there you go. Uh, Luford tried to distract Joey, held his foot for a long time until Kiss came over. Was that a blowing spot? Uh, the first of many of the evening, I think, but, uh, you know, the... There's ways to shoot that and cover that, and I don't think production did. I'm, I'm not sure how they're going to handle the replays or anything like that, but that should be something that is looked at. Um, massive big elbow drop gets Janela the one 2 free and stops his losing slide. And yes, Joey Janela loses his kind of quick losing streak that he's had over the past couple weeks on AEW TV and that stuff with this. This is a, a big win for him. And an okay opener for sure. I thought, other than the blown spot there, uh, the, the wait time for that and that stuff, I thought it was a very suitable opener for what it was. Dark Order 3 and 4. So Alex Reynolds and John Silver take on Private Party. Isaiah Cassidy and Mark Quinn. Uh, Quinn and Cassidy are impressive early. Silver and Reynolds improve every single time I see them. They are a very watchable act. They are. They're really funny on being the elite. I didn't think they could be that funny, but they are really that funny. <laughs> it, it's good. Quinn with a near fall on Silver with the Moonsault Press. A silly string attempt forwarded by Silver and Reynolds lands on lands only a two count. Reynolds and Silver were hanging with Private Party on the double team? Say what? Yes, they were. They have learned double team wrestling and double team tandem maneuvers. Watch out. These guys, maybe in a year or so, could be challenging for that AEW tag team title. They're, uh, like I said, each time out, they look better. Uh, gin and Juice attempt by the Private Party. They, la they landed and get the one, two, three, and that's it for the buy-in. So, all in all, we get two free matches on the YouTube buy-in compared to maybe one on uh, a WWE pay-per-view. So, it's already, hey, 
and they were quality matches, so quality and quantity over, you know, quantity, I guess. To steal a line from Vince Russo, bro, Pyro, and Ballyhoo, here we go. And we open up with a card kind of rundown of everything uh, by the commentary team of Excalibur, JR, and Tony Schiavone on the pay-per-view. And immediately we get thrown right into the tooth and nail match. This is uh, scheduled to be a uh, kind of no disqualification, basically, fight between Dr. Britt Baker and Big Swole. It shot as a cinematic style, but kind of more similar to, and I drew a parallel to this on Twitter, and a few people had agreed with it. Uh, it's a style more similar to the Ro Rowdy Roddy Piper Gold Dust Hollywood Backlot Brawl from WrestleMania 12 more than anything else. So no real goofy um, filtering or no different use of cameras with different frame rates or no filters being used or dramatic lighting or whatever. It's basically hey, we sent cameras out to follow this thing at Dr. Britt Baker's office. So that's what it was. Uh, gutsy with them to go with a cinematic first up. Yeah, that's a little bit of a, of, of a jaw dropper. I would have expected this thing to be, honestly, a little bit farther into the card as well. Um, this is the best that Rebel has ever been presented as a character. Amazing stuff. Yeah, girl has found herself in this role. This is <laughs> good for her. This is... Uh, Finally, somebody, this, this is miles removed from the leader of the dollhouse in Impact Wrestling back in the day or so. Uh, this is, man, she is, um, she's really just sprung out in this role. This is great. Um, Swole gets the W, really entertaining stuff. Basically, the quote-unquote finish of the thing is uh, uh, Rebel tries to, or, or Reba, I guess. <laughs> whatever, uh, tries to hand Dr. Britt Baker a needle of Novocaine, and Big Swole intercepts the needle, and they've two, the two jostle over it, and in the battle of strength, Big Swole uses her strength to jab the needle of Novocaine into Dr. Britt Baker's lit leg, and Dirty Dancing lands into the dental chair, and the one, two, three, and Baker can't get up, obviously, because the Novocaine has numbed everything, and Big Swole has got the Duke. So there we go. Very entertaining stuff. Uh, could have been a bit better done. Still entertaining. I like that they went, though, with the Piper Gold Dust style of a cinematic more than, say, the uh, Stadium Stampede from earlier this year or... Heck, even the uh, AJ Styles Undertaker thing from WrestleMania. Uh, I think that this is a little bit more, I don't want to say quote-unquote realistic, but it, it felt like it. It felt a little bit better than what it uh, initially would have presented. But what I would have done, okay, so supposing out of this, is I would have had them start but fight out into the alley or so and then break away from the thing and say, oh, well, you know, our camera's lost and we have no idea where they're at. But, uh, and, you know, and then throughout the pay-per-view, you get little uh, updates on them and that stuff. And then if there's a quote-unquote dead spot in the pay-per-view that you would think, maybe have them rush in and finish the match in the ring. But by this telling me here is that they did what they could with Dr. Britt Baker's injury that she's got. So uh, I think that they were saying that she's back to 100%. I just don't think that they want to push it right now at this point with her. So uh, maybe lay off the in-ring stuff for maybe a little bit longer. But uh, this is still entertaining as all get out. It was great. Our first in-ring match of the pay-per-view is a tag team encounter between the Young Bucks and the Jurassic Express. So... The Bucks have been kind of teasing a heel turn here, well, well, throughout the past couple of weeks or so, and um, the the road to that has kind of, you know, expanded a little bit more here. Uh, Matt with the repeat gut wrenching suplexes outside of the ring on Jungle Boy, and they eventually get dumped to the outside. This is later on after the the opening bell, probably about six or seven minutes in, and. Uh, the uh, the rolling uh, gut wrench suplexes just keep going. It's it's like the uh, the the gag from the uh, uh, callback to the gag with Sammy Guevara and the Stadium Stampede thing uh, with Matt. So uh, very funny. But uh, Jungle Boy does end up beating the ten count and gets back into the ring. A great spot as Matt cuts off Jungle Boy's tag out to Luchasaurus with a super kick. Uh, Nick also power bombs Jungle Boy onto the apron. 
A, a Meltzer driver attempt thwarted by Luchasaurus, which leads to an extinction effect attempt, which is successful for the Jurassic Express, only lands a two count. Super kick party attempt only nets two, but it takes a BTE trigger for one, two, three for the young bucks. And could this be the return of the Bullet Club bucks? Well, you know what? Hey, uh, it could very well be, uh, and I'd love to see it. I've, I think that that'd be great. Uh, maybe that's what happens. Maybe the, all the members of the elite that are still standing, the core elite members of the Bucks and Omega, turn heel and end up being back to their bratty New Japan selves for a little bit in AEW. Just supposing. Run times. I haven't been given run times yet, so here are some run times. So for the Janela Serpenetico match, uh, that one ran 7:35 for Private Party versus the Dark Order, uh, Reynolds and Silver, 10:25. Uh, uh, no real runtime given for Swole and Baker because of it being a cinematic or so. Uh, we'll see later on. I've averaged that one though probably be about 11 or 12 minutes. And then the Young Bucks taking on Jurassic Express that went 1450 so up next was the 21 man casino battle royal winner of this match would get a aew world title championship opportunity at some point in the future we think it might be full gear but we'll wait and see how everything kind of flows out there and, and kind of rolls out into the ether i know as i'm recording this they're doing the post show uh, press conferences and that stuff. I haven't had a chance to listen to any of them yet, but uh, I'll get a chance, you know, somewhat either later this week or later tonight or whatever to get a chance and see those. But uh, so, anyway, winner of this thing ends up getting that opportunity. First group to debut, because remember, these are people who have drawn suits of cards, and then whoever draws the Joker would be the 21st man. The, in the first group was SCU's Christopher Daniels, Jake Hager of the Inner Circle, Trent uh, from Best Friends, Ray Phoenix, and The Blade, who have kind of formed this new faction with Eddie Kingston over the past few weeks. So again, rules every three minutes, a new group will be drawn. Whoever got the Joker card goes last, and that's the 21st entrant. And I can't remember if they advertised it or not, but the 21st entrant in this battle royal was a mystery entrant going into this. Um, there was a mystery uh, person. I'm not sure if they had leaked it online or whatever, but I had information that I seen on Twitter going into this that the 21st entrant was a mystery opponent. So, so nothing really much happens off the bell with the first group. Second group was Frankie Kazarian, Will Hobbs, Chuck Taylor, Santana, and Ortiz. And man, did Will Hobbs make the most of this opportunity. The guy killed it in there tonight. The, that battle royal was all him. All him. Man, that was crazy. Uh, Ortiz nails Taylor with a retractable baton. Continues that rivalry between Santana and Ortiz and the best friends. Uh, uh, Hager and Hobbs clean house here. Daniels is gone and Blade is gone. And then Group 3 comes out, so it's Billy Gunn, Penta L0M, Ricky Starks, Brian Cage, and Darby Allen. Cage eliminates Billy while Allen eliminates Phoenix. And then that leads to Group 4 and, of course, the Team Taz... Uh, people uh, are feuding with uh, Darby Allen as this is going on. Uh, group 4. So, Sean Spears, who takes a spot at commentary to begin this, basically to gloat. Eddie Kingston, The Butcher, Sonny Kiss, and Lance Archer. Uh, Sonny Kiss eliminates Hager, but Cage eliminates Kiss, and then Archer cleans house. And then it's time for the 21st entrant. And it's Matt Seidel. The last time we seen him, uh, I want to say it was Impact, maybe about a year or so ago. And I can't remember what led to his dismissal from Impact. If he had walked out or uh, was amongst those people that all kind of walked out a, a year or so or whatever it was. Or um, if it was another issue outside or something. But this is... A, a, AEW's taking a chance with Seidel, who has a rather... Well, checkered track record, shall we say, over the past decade or so, but uh, is very um, hungry and is very adamant to get in there. But takes out uh, Sean Spears, so eliminates Sean. He goes for a shooting star on Will Hobbs in the ring, and we've all seen the GIF by now. Uh, Matthew will have some fun loading that into the next Botchamania intro. So. 
I think he hurt himself. Yeah, I think uh, he busted up his shoulder or his collar collarbone pretty good because when he landed, he kind of landed like like that when he hit. So um, I'm the, not a doctor, nor do I play one on TV, only on Twitter. But uh, yeah, I don't see that ending really well for him, unfortunately. And it sucks. You know, just another debut that AEW has brought in that just hasn't gone the way that they wanted. So, uh, apparently, uh, there was a baseball game going on at the same time, too. Uh, because all of a sudden, a whole truckload of fireworks go off in the background uh, from the Jacksonville Baseball Stadium, allegedly. Uh, which was distracting as F. F. <laughs> During this, it just weird pyro go off, and we're expecting like I don't know, maybe like the Dudley Boys to show up or something. Uh, anyways, Cage busts out a body bag and power bombs Darby Allen out of the ring. Uh, and the way Darby landed on the ramp might be cause for concern as well because uh, he obviously in a body bag he don't see what happens. And it seems like every time he does that spot, I was watching a. A Vice TV documentary where they were covering Evolve a few years ago, a, like a year or so ago, and uh, there was a situation where they did a similar thing in Evolve between, I want to say him and Austin Fury, and there was a powerbomb thing, and Allen got banged up off of that, again with the, with the body bag and him not being able to judge, I guess, where he's going to hit or whatever because he's in the body bag, right? And, man, uh, oh, that's, uh, he's got a little bit of Mick Foley in him, don't he? <laughs> just, just, just a tiny bit. But, dude, unreal. Um, Seidel eliminates Spears. Seidel gets Spine Busters, or, sorry, <clears throat> Seidel gets a Spine Buster by Will Hobbs. And I had said here, Hobbs looking like cash. Yeah, this is the most impressive I've seen Will Hobbs on any AEW program, by far. Archer drop kicks out both Hobbs and Cage. Seidel, Kingston, Butcher, and Archer are left. Seidel eliminates the Butcher. Seidel then gets dumped out by Eddie Kingston. And Archer eliminates Kingston and gets a world title chance. And there we go. So whoever wins the main event tonight between MJF and John Moxley has to take on Lance Archer somewhere down the line. Oh boy. Yikes. Um, I wouldn't mind another Moxley-Archer rematch. You know, teaser for what's coming, upcoming, but, you know, uh, I was a fan of their New Japan feud and the Wrestle Kingdom match, I think, from earlier this year. That's hard to believe that was earlier this year was actually fairly decent. I enjoyed it. All right. Uh, now we get into more controversyville here. Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara, the broken rules match. If Sammy wins, Matt leaves AEW. There was a rumor going around prior to this match that I seen online too. It was later corrected to be erroneous that if Matt had won, he would get a TNT title opportunity on Wednesday against Brody Lee. Uh, that obviously, as you'll see later on in the pay-per-view as we discuss this, gets tossed by the wayside and probably would have been tossed by the wayside anyway. So I don't know how that rumor had started or whatever, but that was false. Uh, that's junk. Not even worth talking about, but I talked about it. So there we go. And uh, the match starts over at uh, the football field adjacent to Daly's place. Uh, Matt shows up at the football field. I think it's TIAA Bank Field. I'm sure the Jags fans will correct me in the comments below. And Sammy attempts to run him over. Uh, basically a... Well, I have it down as a false count anywhere match. That's that's it's wrong. It's a last man standing match with false count anywhere rules. So, uh, you know, the you gotta answer to ten count basically. Uh, and uh, the, here's the here's the oh my god scary cringe worthy moment of the night here. Uh, side effect through the table from the top of the scissors lift that they had both climbed up to. Yeah, they had both made their way up to the scissors lift that earlier in the summer, um, I can't remember what it was. I think it was um, a Kenny Omega, it was a thing with Guevara. I think that was a Kenny, I think that was the same scissors lift that was a, a Kenny Omega. Uh, either splash or elbow. I think it was an elbow that went through tables off the top of the scissors lift uh, with Sammy Guevara on an episode of Dynamite. And it w worked and looked out pretty good there. 
Uh, this time it didn't work as well. Um, a side effect through the table from the top of a scissors lift and oh my god Matt lands hard his head and shoulders hit the concrete yes if you slow down and watch the video uh, he overshot the hell out of that table and ended up uh, I shouldn't laugh but he ended up landing a neck and shoulder uh, on the concrete not on the table so nothing really cushioned his fall there on the upper part of his body uh, Dr. Sampson comes out and stops the match legit, and he's on a radio, and he looks like he had pooped his pants. Yes, and a lot of people are concerned at this point. Um, and we're waiting, and Guevara, thinking on his feet, I think, is making his way to the ringside ring area, maybe to cut a promo to kill time, or maybe he gets his hands raised in Victor at the in the ring or something, or whatever. Um, or the audible was called either way an audible was called there at this point uh i'm sure the details are being released as i speak about this right now but anyway audible's called and the match continues with both men basically rushing to the finish so they end up on the stage uh climbing up a scaffold and matt basically pushes sammy off from halfway up the scaffold and Sammy goes through a staged table break in the stage area where it kind of cracks in half. And that's the end of the match. Matt Hardy gets the W uh, as Guevara takes the tumble through the stage. Cannot answer the 10 count. Um, it'll be very interesting to watch the injury wires off, off of this one. Yes, absolutely. It'll be very interesting to watch the injury wires after this one. So up next was the champion versus champion encounter for the AEW Women's Championship. AEW Women's Champion Hikaru Ushida takes on the NWA Women's Champion Thunder Rosa. Uh, palm strike exchanged open and huge momentum for the NWA who returned to a somewhat normal television schedule here. Yes, that's right. Uh, Tuesday, September 15th. Let me double check and make sure that that's actually the day. Yes, it is. Uh, Tuesday, September 15th on Fight TV, uh, NWA uh, kind of returns back to form here as they start their partnership with the Championship Wrestling from wherever group. Uh, and I think in California, as this one's being taped or broadcasted out of Los Angeles. Uh, Nick Aldis taking on Miracle Mike Bennett for the NWA Championship. Uh, that should be a decent one for sure, and I'm sure we'll get a, a challenger for Thunder Rosa's NWA title here, as this one was not on the line uh, going here, but this is a great cross-promotional opportunity. Uh, you know, it was talked about on Twitter during this match quite a bit and got a lot of traction. I don't think it was really talked during the broadcast, but the fact that the NWA had their women's champion on uh, kind of opens up the doors a little bit. Will we see Nick Aldis? the NWA champion, or if it's Miracle Mike Bennett after the 15th, will we see him on AEW maybe in future months leading up to a match? A jumping knee strike off of the chair to the outside by Rosa on Sheeta. Sh such a great exchange of submission holds. This match is what was needed. It puts the show back on its rails. Yeah, it, it really does. Rosa with an oh my god Death Valley driver on the apron. A Meteora by Sheeta on Rosa to the outside. Wow. And in the finish, the Tomiyashi by Shida, uh, basically a Shining Wizard, and a 1-2-3, and a great match. Uh, yeah, this one was incredible. The runtime for this one, uh, again, was 17 minutes. Um, and, yeah, it was a quality 17 minutes for sure. And got the crowd back into it, which is really what you needed. Backstage segment with Kip Sabian. Uh, Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford announced that their wedding will be on Dynamite. Uh, but this Wednesday, uh, details on Kip's bachelor party will be announced. And he will announce who the best man is. And, oh look, he can promote his Twitch. How nice. Okay, I'll admit, I, I lolled on this one. I, I really did. It was about this time in the pay-per-view where we learned that Matt Hardy had been taken to hospital or to a local medical facility, uh, for reals, not story of time here. Uh, and it's like, man, you know, stop a match when somebody's concussed and start it right back up. But I'm sure that the guy's wife won't have any issue with it or anything. Oh, she, uh, oh, oh my. 
Anyways, eight-man tag team action up next. The Dark Order versus the Nightmare Family. So Dark Order had the TNT champion Brody Lee, Colt Cabana, Evil Uno, and Stu Grayson versus Dustin Rhodes, QT Marshall, Scorpio Sky, and Matt Cardona. And the eight-man starts hot. Uh, Cabana and Cardona was fun to watch. I can't help but think that they're going to tease towards something there with that. Maybe that's a dynamite match in the next couple of weeks or a few weeks that we're looking forward to see. Uh, some dissension between Cabana and Evil Uno. Uh, Anna J attempts to interfere, but Brandy Rhodes eliminates her with a pump kick. And then we get awkward pervy JR on commentary. Um, <laughs> out of nowhere. Um, yikes. <laughs> uh, QT kicks out after a sensational four-maneuver sequence by the Dark Order. And then the finish of the match, Cabana goes for a moonsault, Miss and Dustin rolls him up, one, two, three. Uh, Runtime for this one was uh, 15, 10. Post-match, Lee and Cabana have a confrontation. Evil Uno comforts Cabana. And then backstage, Dustin Rhodes cuts a promo Wednesday. He gets a TNT title shot against Brody Lee. Yes, and it was a fiery promo. I like that one. That, that was good. AEW World Tag Team titles were up next, where we had Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page, the champions, taking on FTR with Tully Blanchard. FTR with some awesome new jackets. Hangman Page got some new gear. I think it's the first time I've seen him in long tights. Um, it looks good on him. It was just a little off-putting at first. I was like, dude, wow. He's got the long tights going. That's amazing. Uh, dissension early with Kenny and Hangman. Uh, Hangman has a roll-up pin, but Dax distracts the ref long enough for only two. It doesn't look like that Dax's knee is bothering him tonight. No, it, it looked like it was moving crisper and moving a little better here. Uh, great tandem offense by both sides. Two count only on the FTR suplex big splash combo. Uh, FTR worked on Kenny's knee for that injury advantage, and that was the story going forward. Moonsault to the outside by Hangman on FTR. Uh, Harwood and Wheeler do it with double diving headbutts. Only land two shades of the British Bulldogs, as was mentioned on commentary. They're pretty cool. Uh, double team Bulldog on Omega by Dax and Cash on the outside. A blockbuster suplex by Page for only two. And then we started building towards the finish here. Uh, last call attempt afforded by Cash and then a V-trigger Dex Hangman uh, plus a chop block on Omega. And that leads to the Mind Breaker Spike Pile Driver attempt by FTR for only two. But then a second Spike Pile Driver attempt gets to one, two, three. FTR is your new AEW World Tag Team Champions. Post match, FTR leads two cans of beer near Hangman, and Omega chases them off. Omega kicks the beer as the title reign of 228 days ends. Omega lays down an ultimatum to the Young Bucks as he angrily stomps out of the building and gets into a waiting SUV, still in his full wrestling gear. Uh, there's an ultimatum for them to join him uh think about it is the cleaner back will we find out more i guess we'll find out more uh on wednesday and going forward and then the surprise of the night for me this mimosa mayhem match between orange cassidy and chris jericho i was expecting a cinematic this thing's an actual match <laughs> they shot this live um you know, as a actual wrestling contest. Um, hot start as Jericho hits a cold breaker for two. It was almost over that quickly off the top. Uh, Jericho almost catapults Cassidy into the mimosa vat at ringside. Yes, the winner would be pinfall, submission, or the first to dunk his opponent and completely submerge them into two, one of either two vats of uh, mimosas that <laughs> were outside the ring at ringside. Uh, I have this written down. This is basically the FMW Piranha Pool match, just with more OJ and less carnivorous fish. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it pretty much is. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure if I got the promotion right, but uh, it's it's definitely a J Japanese death match, piranha match feel to it. Uh, I don't think there were any carnivorous fish. I don't think that that would be allowed even in North American television on pay per view now. But, um, you know, hey, it's to each their own. Jericho power bombs Cassidy through the table. Mitch Noku driver by Cassidy only nets two. Uh, Cassidy hits a Superman punch and throws Jericho into the vat. However, Jericho's leg is the only thing that hits. A running PK and DDT only nets two for Cassidy. Jericho hits a cold breaker, only lands a two count. However, Jericho goes for a superplex. Here's the finish. Cassidy fights out, hits a Superman punch, rocks Jericho. Big run and a second... 
Superman Punch knocks Jericho into the vat, and Cassidy wins. Uh, yeah, and a big splash, pun intended, <laughs> for this match. Uh, yeah, this was a jaw dropper. I didn't expect it to be this good. Uh, I thought that this was going to be a full on cinematic. Full Gear is announced for Saturday, November 7th. That's their next pay per view. Then it's time for the main event uh, the AEW World Title Match MJF with Wardlow versus John Moxley. MJF surprisingly subdued going into this, and uh, oh, yeah, by the way, the specter of Lance Archer getting a winner in this. And, it, and they're showed in the crowd. Lance and Jake Roberts have taken seats in the crowd at Daly's place watching this encounter. Cross arm breaker by MJF, no submission, but the story of the match was Moxley's shoulder. Yes, yeah, as MJF got enough of the arm breaker on it to wear it down and, and kind of give the story that did he separate the shoulder? Is that what happened? Rough battle that has leaked out of the ring at times. MJF gets busted open after a slingshot into the barrier. A gotch style prowl driver and only two for Mox. Then Mox bites MJF on his cut. Ugh. MJF then bikes back and delivers a double stomp on the arm. Yeah, like almost like a coupe de grace on the arm. It was, that was outstretched like this. It was kind of... Uh, monster clothesline by Mox only two. And remember, the paradigm shift is banned here. So if Mox uses it, he's DQ'd. Mox goes for it anyways, but allows MJF to go for the solid of the earth armbar. Heat Seeker by MJF only two. A second Heat Seeker only lands two... Crossroads attempt only lands two by MJF, and then the finish of the match, Wardlow jumps up on the apron and distracts Bryce Remsburg, the referee. He tosses the dynamite diamond ring to MJF, but MJF kind of fumbles the catch, and then as he goes back to pick it up off the apron, uh, Mox hits the paradigm shift, one, two, three, Mox retains because Bryce didn't see the actual maneuver, his back was turned to everything that was going on. Post-match, Jake Roberts and Lance Archer look on. Fade to black with Mox taking MJF's blood and writing Mox on his chest, and that's it. So a bit of a lengthy one because there's a lot to digest here and a lot to talk about. Uh, it was a long show, too. Uh, my DVD recorder skipped out at four hours, so I'll have to go back on a PVR and actually get the exact timeage for everybody a little bit later on. Uh, watch my Twitter, I guess, or whatever. I'll post it if I remember. Uh, I'll give the show... It's just a, such a weird vibe to it after the uh, the Matt Hardy thing. Um, about 7.5 out of 10. 7.6 out of 10, maybe. Um, just, there's a lot of stuff there that were, was kind of misplaced. It felt kind of disjointed at times. Uh, but still felt a lot better than watching, you know, Payback or any of the recent WWE offerings. But... You could tell that the wind kind of got ripped out of everybody's sails after the Sammy and Matt thing went weird. But uh, that's the way... That, that's the thing that wrestling lore is made out of, is what happens with these weird shows and that stuff. And I think that people might be revisiting this one for some time to come, for sure. Uh, anyways, later days, happy wrestling watching. And before we take off, uh, your pick for match of the night is according to the Twitter. <clears throat> and your pick for match of the night off of this one is the Omega Page versus FTR battle. Uh, and it got half of the 20 votes out of the 20 of you that voted. So, hey, right on. Cool. Anyways, later days. Happy wrestling watching, folks. We will catch you next time on Nitromaniac TV's Wrestling Unlimited. Now i got to throw this in here and try to cut this down into a more suitable length for you all. But uh, enjoy, and we'll talk to you soon. Stay safe out there.